we are here with the Honorable Commissioner for Water Resources and Environment, Engineer Dongo Adhere. I'm here. My name is Dr. Gashavi Associates. I'm here with Jessica Associates. We are in the office staff. Uh, the idea behind this meeting is to unravel what and what the government of Governor Samuel Oton has so far achieved in water resources and environment. An agency is led by engineer Daniel Adair, who is now about to tell us what and what has been done in his ministry during this period. It's now a year since uh, engineer Adair became the commissioner. But this is telling us all that the government has achieved during this period. Okay, <clears throat> thank you, Dr. Togga and uh, Mrs. Atogya, my dear friends. Um, it's been almost exactly a year, just one day to a year, since I reported in this office as the Commissioner for Water Resources and Environment. Um, we've been able to achieve a lot uh, in the assignment that was given to me by His Excellency Dr. Samuel Otto. I must say that I received a lot of support from His Excellency, both by way of uh, sharing ideas with me, by way of communicating clearly what is there for this ministry use, and by way of providing resources uh, to our ministry. Um, we have achieved quite a bit. Uh, when I came here, I came from a completely private sector background where you are measured strictly on, uh, by results. Um, I came to meet a, a, a civil service, public service institution in the ministry. So, I mean, we were worlds apart. But the, I, I've been able to lift up the ministry a little bit. And the ministry has also educated me a lot about what I, the things I didn't know. Um, we have heard from His Excellency, we have been able to change the, the part of the culture in this ministry. The respect for time, uh, the time people used to come to work is, is, is quite different from now, it's quite different from what it used to be. And the fact that we are measured by results. I met a civil service that um, to a large extent gave excuses for failure. But I come from a background that you have measured strictly by results. Nobody cares what the million excuses you have for failure. It is that singular reason why you succeed that is important. So rubbing minds together will change the culture. And then uh, people have uh, came, uh, people we've been working together on all this um, part of this ministry now feel more responsible to the results. They are more results oriented now. A lot of significant things have been achieved. Uh, when I came, the project had started already. By working together with the very able uh, general manager, we uh, repaired the water uh, filtration uh, system of the Makedi Water Works, and it's working perfectly now. The resources that were deployed were judiciously used. Supervision was done um, personally so that uh, the plant is working and we are, we are keeping water and pumping. His Excellency also supported us in the environmental sector uh, uh, immediately I came in here by procuring uh, extra platforms for us. We were, I mean, four super trucks were procured for us. A payloader was uh, uh, procured for us, and also some of the equipment that were down were reactivated in-house by in-house personnel using uh, the mega resources that were provided and used judiciously. So now um, we are living testimony that the town is wearing a different look. There were rubbish heaps that were several years old 
that have been mounted with the big mounts and were left there for many years, but they've disappeared. They appear from time to time, but we clear them as, as they come. We are trying to sustain uh, the cleaning up all the time. We are not where we want to be, but we are, we are, we are on our way. We are much better than what it was before now. Uh, we are look, working towards a self-sustaining system that will ensure the town is, is kept clean uh, through a partnership between residents and, and the government. Uh, we've stepped up the environmental uh, cleaning in many ways. Okay, back to water sector. We approach this excellently that uh, we've been trying to secure funding to put in place um, a comprehensive water recirculation system for Masaki. It's something that requires about 50 to 52 million dollars. It's anywhere around 30 billion today, but we have not succeeded just yet. So our approach is excellent to that. We can still uh, patch and repair some of the old water lines, which are very old and are leaking in several places, and several points have been damaged. And we see the point of it, and graciously uh, release some money, and we use that money very judiciously, and several parts of the town now have water. Logic water, Ampak water, uh, waters have water. Uh, high level parts of uh, Kashmala streets, where Karako uh, street, um, so the secretariat complex have water, Putra Quarters area has water. Right now, water is reaching Ampak Quarters hands. Uh, we, we try to repair all the way to modern market, but that line is been damaged completely. People have built houses on the line and destroyed it completely. In fact, if we charge that line, we are going to bring down some houses by the flooding right from the foundation. There is now water in uh, Rajas Quarters, which has never been for many years. Steady. This week, as we speak, as of yesterday, water has started reaching Commissioner's Quarters. As from this week, Commissioner's Quarters will start, will start having water. We even have to lay a new line from all the Kukoro to near uh, Kukoro through into Commissioner's Quarters. We are still working on, on this one. That's the phase one. We just chose nine lines to fix. After they will stabilize, we will now choose another set of lines and fix. Pending, and we did all this for 22 million, including repairs or overhead time. So it's a far cry from the, the 30 billion that is required. We will tend to, once this line stabilizes and we stop seeing leaks here and there, then we'll take another set of lines and uh, uh, source, I mean, approach this excellency for the sources and fix them. So the lines that were covered by old uh, lines will start, will start having, will start receiving uh, water. Because the issue is not uh, uh, lack of water, but uh, reticulation of the water. We are taking water, we can supply water to the whole town, but the pipeline system is not there. Uh, His Excellency has provided uh, the needed support by providing fuel, by providing water treatment chemicals to us to sustain our responsibility in this regard. Uh, he's also provided counterpart funding in the sanitation and the rural water uh, schemes so that uh, the partners like UNICEF, uh, USAID, uh, United Purpose can partner with the government to provide sanitary. Hygiene facilities in the local government. These are the things that uh, we are sustaining. Uh, before I came here, there was no water, there was no pipe bone water in this ministry. But there's pipe bone water still coming out. This may look small, but for many years, there's nothing like that. So, this government of this excellence is making giant strides uh, regarding, I mean, uh, when you view it in the light of the fact that. There's an active quantity of, of, of funds. We know what the price of, of oil is today and how much Nigeria is selling. So the federal government is only a small fraction. For, uh, today is from 40% and below of what they were earning before. So, um, in view of the positive funds, uh, the 
Vamos a usar con la siguiente. Yes, um, the waterworks in Katmala and Kutko, there were some new waterworks that were built in Katmala and Kutko by a company called CGT. And for some strange reason, they were also given the contract to uh, manage these two plants. Well, this seems to turn across. Yes. They, it was built then, and that contract was put in place at that time as well. Okay. Um, uh, this government, in the first time, inherited that contract. And that contract was very extensive to the fact that a plant, I mean, the two plants that were built for about $4 billion, to run the plant for one year, it was spending more than $1 billion to run the plant. So uh, now the contractor was claiming a lot of money that he was being owed. Uh, the state government paid uh, $1.1 billion to the contractor. But the contractor is still claiming that we are owing uh, him $1.3 billion and another uh, several hundred or 900 uh, million. So it was not sustainable. So the, the, you know, when the government was not able to pay the money as I went due, the contractor shut down the place and sealed it that until we pay before uh, we resume work. So here too, His Excellency has taken the bull by the horn and say that what we do is to take over the running of the plants. So uh, the plant is not more complex than the Matadi Water Works that we are running successfully. So uh, the plant is already in the works to pay the contractor some of the money. Then the contractor will work with us for three months and hand over uh, the running of the plant, train uh, our staff, hand over the running of the plant. To uh, the ministry, uh, then we can pay the balance of uh, the money. For the yes, yes, we need to do that. Because yes, the contractor has agreed to do that. Okay, when are we expecting uh, the total work to take place? Um, we are sourcing the money. There's a minimum that we need to pay the contractor to get that. As we speak, uh, a, a total of 965 million naira has been awarded for that project. But in the interim, His Excellency has graciously also released funds. So we went and fixed the old Otoko water works. We went and fixed it. And then the line running from Otoko into Otoko, the old line was leaking like a sea. So what we did is that we made the bridge from the old line into the new line. So we're using the old uh, Otoko water works to feed water now. Are pumping through the new line in Otoko. So Otoko Town has started receiving heavy water from the plant. So that's okay. And, uh, yes. So even though the, the old plant is uh, down, I mean, if the new plant is not working, but the old plant is, it has a much smaller capacity, but at least uh, the, the good residents of Otoko are now receiving uh, heavy water uh, to, to use. So recently we were told that um, said Otoko Water Works and they are planning to reactivate it. Yes. So is that true? And how are we going to do it? When are we going to start having operational relations? Yes, indeed. Uh, uh, His Excellency led a team, including myself and some other senior government people and other uh, key parties who have been connected with uh, the Mar Maradu Water Works, which is a charity in Boko and Lara. We went and inspected it to indeed confirm that the plant has been vandalized very badly. Uh, the plant didn't run well, it ran for a few months only and, and shut down because we had serious design, fundamental design uh, problems. So it didn't run. So uh, we went to look at it with a view to reactivating it. Forest Excellency has charged me and others to work with the Federal Ministry of Water Resources, as well as um, other key uh, people in the National Assembly, so that we can put it, we can put this next year's budget, and then uh, secure funding to be able to refurbish that plant. But in the interim, he has already agreed that uh, Boko is very key, so he wants to uh, have an interim water supply arrangement. 
So we'll have modular water supply, whereby we'll have a cluster or a few boreholes that are pumped into an overhead tank to serve a black community. Then there will be another one in another part of the town. So even if the whole town is not serviced, people can actually go to this point and get clean uh, water uh, to drink uh, uh, for their service or for their use. Water tankers can go here and fetch water to supply to a less cost. This, uh, this uh, is done in Ghana. Has, it's done not been done. It's been designed. The money money has been voted for it. We are hoping we money has been like and I can share that with you. I can show you. Um, we are hoping that some money is coming in, hopefully next month. And then we can do that while uh, working on the greater water work, which has been vandalized all the way from the intake of Buru to uh, Ijoko. Now, finally, uh, there are other places that are not signed in the state, villages. Uh, are there been any water supply projects going on in the villages in the government? Um, yes. It's, it's uh, all planned. Let me, let me share a document with you. Let me share the clouds that we have, like the fact that um, we've uh, made the budget for, not just the budget, a state plan of covering most of uh, the areas. local government areas, not just the big town, but look at most of the, the, the major settlements will be covered by water supply in the town. In Don C, it's going to be mostly through um, dams. We're going to walk through uh, dams because boreholes are not very feasible in large parts of Don C. So, um, Don C will be covered mostly with uh, dams, but in zone B and zone A, we already have uh, a good uh, understanding of the areas. Wherever boreholes are feasible, we we'll use boreholes to supply water uh, to the town. Uh, but in the other areas, it will be uh, dams. There's also a plan to refurbish the old PCI water stream. Uh, these are monies that have been budget, budgeted for this uh, project. This is what I have in my hand now. I will show you. Okay. Um, if you can see, these are just a group of small town uh, water supply to PCI stream. We voted uh, 300 million. Uh, this has been moved to uh, to provision of both holes and then dams. We also voted uh, that we would drill 500 bore holes, including um, mini reticulation including overhead tanks, including solar uh, systems for some of the boreholes. But this has been, uh, it, it's been approved, but it's been pulled down. It's not going to be 1.4 billion, it's going to be 500 million. Um, resumption, resumption of Utopia Kasma and Water Works. Like I mentioned before, 565 million will be paid to CDC so that they can resume work. And then design and construction of Mogibi F dam. Okay, the dams are actually we voted uh, uh, 300 million. Repair and limited extension of water distribution lines in Makati. This is the major page that would mark up all the old water lines with the republic because we haven't got uh, 30 billion to do with it. Then there will be some ecological intervention as well. This, uh, this is the money that is being sold for that. Um, major projects will be uh, done in the state. Uh, the, the, the state government wants to leave a, a lasting mark on the state where you see tangible uh, projects that will, will have lived in and people will receive their dividends by in, in no small way. Now, uh, the issue of the political funding. Uh, we have not heard much.
شدن دیگه از نظر جامعه انسان این اوپرفام اسکیپ اند دن هاو فار هاز ایت گون بی فلورین فور جاب و ecological forms are not common to the state the way they used to come to be. There was an ecological uh, office and form which was sent to the state and it came in, in large quantities. But today, uh, some mon- I mean, all the monies are subsumed within the budget, anticipated within the budget. So some monies are tagged uh, ecological but they just take a percentage of it. So ecological forms are not being sent to the state in, uh, in that manner. That is why uh, we have done very little in ecological intervention. But um, we are making efforts towards that. We have several memos that are pending before His Excellency and before the ESCO um, to intervene in serious ecological uh, issues. We have several erosion sites, uh, several uh, key uh, gullies that need to be covered for residents to be able to uh, transport themselves to and from the house. So we've actually done that. You also mentioned about um, uh, mitigation against uh, floods. Then yesterday we went out to look at uh, areas that were affected, uh, were impacted by the uh, rain that fell two days ago, and uh, mapped out what needs to be done. Uh, today I went to His Excellency and uh, tried to extract. Uh, for funding, but there's very limited funding. But in view of, of the pressing uh, need for ecological intervention, he approved some funds uh, so that we can do some intervention in the critical area. Before the rain started, we started distilling the water, but it requires us to have extra staff. We have very few staff that can do that. We have to hire ad hoc staff, we have to hire uh, excavators, we have to hire equipment to be able to do this. Like the uh, uh, drainage channel in in uh, in John Key uh, area, in John Four, in John Four area, uh, you need uh, an excavator. You need the dozer that can go inside the floor to be able to open up the channel. So we haven't got those funds, but only this afternoon we graciously approved for some funds to be released so that we can do some of this uh, uh, intervention. But you can see it's a far cry from what I asked for to, to, to what I got. Because there are, I mean, there are no funds. You can see red viral. Uh, I don't want the details to be public. But red viral means <laughs> is, a, is a, the big boy. So uh, it's been addressed. And uh, when I presented it, he saw the need and approved whatever can be accommodated and the current issues so that we can do some uh, intervention. Then uh, we limit the impact of the flood flooding. Thank you, Honorable Commissioner. Uh, we thank you for giving us the data that we have been able to. There is uh, one more thing. Uh, some parts of the town of this new township that might be on the I don't know if we'll be able to do that or see. There are some parts of the town that even the streets are not very um, uh, constructed and so on. There are ditches. And then, I don't know if uh, you have a plan to that. Yeah, um, I can answer that. Uh, we are uh, clearing the grasses, we are, we are trimming the grasses as we speak. If you go to Boko Road now, you can see we are clearing the grasses on both sides of the road and on the, on the mid range uh, of the road. We trim, if you go out now and come left, right now we can see we trim many of the trees. However, the mistake residents keep making is that a God, it is the duty of government to clear all the trees and do that. Wrong. It is uh, the resident's responsibility to keep their compound tidy and the area between their compound and the gutter is their responsibility. It's the responsibility of, of residents to keep their compound and the frontage of their compound clean. It's not the duty of government. Government is not to come, to come and cut grass in front of your house. Even the, the gutter in front of your house is your responsibility to keep it clean. So I appeal to residents to keep the, our town clean. It is our town. It is your town. It belongs to us all. Uh, I mean, government has got the resources. Uh, 
then to go around and clean everything and clean your compound and clean even your house and uh, small town. Uh, somebody can even have Domo to come and give him a bath. <laughs> Domo hasn't got those resources. We are living in very lean times now, very, very lean times. So let us partner with government. And government is you and I. We have responsibility. The people who complain the loudest don't pay one dime of tax. It's true or false. So I, it's an appeal that it is we, all of us, residents and government, in partnership that can keep our towns safer. So people should stop waiting for government to come and clear the book. And by the way, owners of plots are meant to keep them tidy. Otherwise, they stand uh, the risk of losing the plot. So whoever has a plot and has allowed it to be turned into a waste dump, a garbage uh, dump, or everything is going uh, busy there, it stands a good chance of uh, losing the plot. If you look at the, the uh, I mean, pro, I mean the proposals we, we, we put forward for to throw the state out of assembly, um, it, it includes stiffer penalties for people before that of, of environmental laws. So we appeal to all residents that it is our town. You cannot wait for government to come and do everything for you. It doesn't work. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doc.